Protestantism is one way. I would say another one is... So what, you, what you're saying is you're going to determine what is the truth. It's not because somebody says it's the truth. No, you have yeah. to find out whether it is true. But let me finish right? my, my ways. Okay. Right, so I said that you can either do it... Intu uh, you can either intuit it. So in other words, it can be something intu uh, intuitive like the existence of man. It can either be something which is logically um, reasoned, like for example from first principles. And I would put underneath that or next to it mathematics, mathematical truths. Okay. Right. So I would say mathematical truths are also something which are which can be proven if you put okay. things together. One way or another, regardless of the categories. Yeah. Yeah. You're finding there, there are ways to find out yeah. what is true. Right. right? right. And, and I would argue that so you can the, do that. The important point there. Yes. Is that you don't call it truth if you can't show that it's true. Absolutely. Would it be dishonest? Yes. To, to claim something is the truth. Yes. That's not. Yes. So that's where I draw the line. I may believe yeah. something very strongly, but yeah. I won't say it's the truth unless I can show that it's true. Right. Because I think it's dishonest to do otherwise. I'll be honest with you, Aaron. I th I believe that our conception, because I know that you might. So I apologize. Can I stand there? Oh, all right. Sorry, I apologize, man. Um, I understand that you yeah, might. Have... I'm going to have to go quick. But... Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll make this very quick. So I understand, Aaron, that um, you might have encountered a lot of Christian fundamentalists and things like that. I want to say from an Islamic perspective, our conception of God, Allah, that you've got in your shirt, right? is completely different from that of the Christian God, right? In that it's not triune, it's not Jesus being, you know, God or the Son of God and so on. So what I would say is that bearing that in mind <clears throat> and bearing in mind that our understanding of God is an incorporeal, immaterial, one um, necessary being, which is independent, I would say that that can be proved from first principles, Aaron. And I can prove that to you right now. That you, you can prove God exists. Yeah, yeah, from first principles. And I'm not saying God exists in the vernacular, once again, thinking about okay. and, any, and any yet, particular there God. there are all these eminent <coughs> philosophers who are atheists. How is that possible? No, it's possible that people can f uh, believe in f uh, false beliefs, right? Yeah. Just because, uh, just because people uh, believe in it's, atheism, it's it doesn't mean it's true. It's possible people... I'm talking to an Muslim. Yeah, of course yeah, it's no, possible. Well, anyone, anyone can make beliefs. a claim. Well, you have to ask the same By the way, I want to invite you to something, if well, you don't mind. Yeah. I do a um, semi-regular video series where I read a few surahs of the Quran. Right. I write a blog post with my impression of them. I'm only a third of the way into the book, right? And then I have a video hangout with a number of, up to this point, they've been mostly ex-Muslims. I have one believer. And they correct me on what I got wrong because I don't know anything about the Hadith. The Quran, all right, no I problem. I read the Tafsirs as much as I can to yes. try to get, you know. No, I'm happy to, I'm happy to assist with that. All right. Yeah, and I'll give you my number before you leave. But well, I'm, I'm about to leave. So. No, no, no. Just let's, well, I want to say one one thing, and then okay. you can kind of challenge it if you want. What I was going to say is, do you agree that there are contingent things in existence, things that depend upon other things for their existence, and things which could be arranged in any other way? No, I'm not sure of that. For example, right? You're wearing a T-shirt. The okay. T-shirt that you're wearing has is it depends on some kind of material, and it could be rearranged in any other. It could be blue. It could have been green or yellow. Okay. Right. So. Those things are in existence. C contingent things, possible things are in existence. Contingent possible things yeah. are in existence. Yes. Okay. All right. If it's possible. And now here's I my here's my possible. here's my postu here's my postulation. My only postulation today. My okay. postulation is that it's impossible for there to be a world where there are only possible things in existence. And I'll tell you why uh, how I reason that. I reason that I reason that. Uh, uh, Josh, I disagree. Uh, yeah, Josh, bro. we can talk about it afterwards. <laughs> no, but I, I want to hear your reasoning. Well, well, you don't have to agree or disagree. Look, we're, 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 so I want to hear your reasoning. Uh, look, you the re already believe in God, right? I it, do, but I don't think that argument's I bet good. He's no problem. You. It's, you don't have to believe it's good, Josh. I'm speaking to Aaron, if you don't mind. Uh, so what I was going to say was, the reason why only possible things cannot be in existence is because you have the absurdity of dependent things depending, of, uh, depending upon dependent things ad infinitum. And so you have compound de dependency. In other words, there's no necessary reason for anything to come into existence in particular. So in other words, my postulation is as follows. My postulation is that there must be a necessary being through which all other dependent things, all other contingent things depend on in order for there to be any existence in the first place. Now, here's my question to you. If you say there must be a necessary, that's yeah. a tautology, it's necessary, right? It must be. But you haven't said How's that either tautology? must be. And you also said you, there, you, that's there not can't tautology. be a world where there are only possible things. I'll tell you why. That's implying that there's yeah. a world where there are impossible things. No, 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 no absolutely impossible. not. So, okay, you've got three categories, right? Absolutely right. You've got impossible things like a squared circle which cannot be in existence. We agree with that, right? Me and you agree. A squared circle okay. cannot exist in the real world. 
Then you have things which are contingent, things which are possible, things which could have otherwise been differently, or which if you take out of creation, the creation doesn't collapse. These things are dependent things, they're contingent things, all right? Then you have, and this is what my postulation is, you must have a necessary being that puts all other contingent things into existence and through which it can depend on. Otherwise, you have the absurdity of dependent things depending upon dependent things ad infinitum. Now, what I'm saying is, as simple as this, right? From my perspective, I could not imagine, it's not possible. I would say it's logically unfeasible from a uh, epistemological perspective for there to be a world with only dependent things. Can you explain how there could be a world with only dependent things? And it, first of all, that's that's, a, that's the first yeah, question. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't see it as that. I mean, yeah, yeah. E even, yeah. even when we have uh, a symbiosis, there's an evolution to get there. So right, it right. doesn't always start out that way. Right, so, 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 that, so what I'm saying is, no problem. So would you agree with me that there's a necessary existence that puts all other possible th things into existence? No. Why not? Because there's no indication of it. No, no, there, there, there is no. Do you know what the indication of that is? What? Do you know what the indication of that is? And let me tell you what the Obviously indication. Not. Right, right, right. So, say for example, let me put this in mathematical terms. Say you have a series. You're not going to help me if you go there. <laughs> no, you know you don't know, right? So, you say you have a series, and and in that series you have possible things in that series. Possible one, possible two, possible. Or call it dependent thing, contingent thing, whatever you want to call it. Does this argument work on you? Uh, forget about. Are you talking about the mathematical object of a series? <coughs> yes, a se like I said. No what problem. Is this a series. A yeah. series is. What, okay, why are you saying there are possible objects in a series? No, 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 no. There is or there isn't? no. Let me explain to you. I'm using a cosmological example, right? Which is an example which makes reference to the universe, but putting it in a mathematical term. I'm not saying, right? right? I study physics. That's exactly. Very good. Oh no, but that's good. So what I'm saying is that, for example, Aaron, Aaron, listen to me. <laughs> What I'm saying is, it's very simple, right? If you have a number of false premises, then you're going to get to a false conclusion. That's what I'm reading so well, far. Okay, so uh, uh, premise one, impossible, th or let's say po uh, postulation one, impossible things can't be in existence. A squared circle can't be in existence. Agreed. Okay. Agreed, all right. Impossible means impossible. All right. Okay. A possible thing, like for example, this hat, it's got NY on it, right? Sorry. Is it? Sure, my bald head, yeah. what are you doing? All right. It's got, you see this guy? You want to put a head on his head? <laughs> okay. <laughs> New York, right? Now, this hat could have had on it LA. Yes? It could have had on it LA, right? It could have been a blue, it could have been a green hat. Now, that, so in other words, this cap that he's got on his head is a possible contingent thing. You, I'm sure you're aware of this, this argument, right? Okay, I'm, I'm sure. Just right. wondering if it's going to go. Now, it didn't have to now, exist. Now, and yeah, it didn't have to exist, right? Now, a necessary fact is 2 plus 2 equals 4. Agreed? Okay. Because that fact, 2 plus 2 equals 4, could not be any other way. All right, but we're not changing. We're not changing the axioms. Because that's the only person. No, no, no. We're, we're not. Cha we're not changing. We're, we're, we we can go to gold or we can go to uh, and and that. But for the sake of argument, we're saying two plus two equals four. Okay. Unless we want to really make this an absurd argument or go crazy. Okay. Is two plus two equals four is a necessary fact. So in other words, it's eternally going to be two plus two is always going to be four. Okay. Right. So a necessary fact is something which could not be any other way. Okay. In the context of existence, what I'm saying is that you have possible existences and you must have a necessary existence. Because, right. because if you have only possible existences, which could be any other way, then it's conceivable that this world would have been any other way. Because this universe could have been any other way. Just within this galaxy and there are All right. billions so there of must, galaxies, there, so every yeah. other way is probably out there. Oh, perfect. So you're, you're agreeing that this universe could have been any other way. No, I'm saying that there's all kinds of variations. Yeah, right. So you agree with that, right? Yeah. All right. Ma 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 even if you argue Josh, what? Josh, Josh, no, but I'm saying even if you argue... Can you allow? Can you, we can talk about Christianity later. I'm saying even if you argue what? There's a gap between the necessary being and God. So even no, if not for me. No, I'm saying even if you establish... For you, bro. Even if you establish you're Christian. a necessary... No, no, that's the thing. No, no, no. I'm not saying Christianity. I'm saying theism. No, no, no. Even if you say there is a necessary being... Can we do one thing at a time? I'm just saying... Because we're talking to an atheist. No, but I'm saying just... Because I, I just want a clarification. Yeah, yeah. You can establish the necessary existence of this being. Okay. Right. But that doesn't mean that there has to be that being. But has to we be haven't done that yet with him. So can we but do I'm that? For, the properties of God. No, no, no. But from. we can have that's a separate discussion, it Josh. Would be an we can have that. Side effect if you're trying to prove God to an atheist and you're deconverting a Christian. In the <laughs> no, no. Yes. No, I just, I just, I just yes. think. No, I just think it's good arguments for God's existence, and I don't think the ontological arguments. Are good. <laughs> that's what I, I would just yeah. say. That's fine, bro. So that's fine. But you understand. Now the point I'm making to you is. If you have a world of only possible existences, nothing... Which, of course, that's nothing, the only thing you could have. No, you can't have that. 
But no, you, you, you can only have a world of possible existence, because obviously okay. you can't have impossible existence. No, 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 no. You're, 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 you're juxtaposing the word possible with impossible. I'm, I agree with you, you can't have... I ha think that's correct. Aaron, no, we were... There's a third category called necessary. Yes, yeah, exactly, okay. right? But, I mean... Yes, go ahead. Apart from mathematical truths... Yes. ...which yes. are only true because we've got a logical system of axioms we've built up, what do you consider a necessary... I think. All oh, right, excellent. So that's a really good question. So we said 2 plus 2 equals 4 is a necessary fact. It will always be 2 plus 2 equals 4 eternally, right? Well, why do you call it necessary? Necessary because it couldn't be any other way. Well, it's not what. So, uh, what's your name? What's your name? Julia. Julia. It's not what. He's drawing on. He said so, you can't have by the way, circle, so it's not. This is not what I call it. This is what Leibniz called it. It's what Godel calls it. It's what um, uh, Avicenna calls it. It's what Farabi calls it. Everybody says it calls it necessary existence. So it's not. I'm not calling it anything. I'm just bringing it back. What's in the literature? You, it, regardless of the names you throw right. out, yeah, of yeah. anybody that you might have read. You have to understand the argument and be able to convey that argument. So it doesn't matter that some other people. Well, I've, I've written a book on it actually. It's called Kalam Cosmological Arguments. You can you can buy it if you want. It's actually a bestseller now in the yeah. atheist atheist section. It's overtaking God delusion. So I think I have uh, actually uh, understood the argument. Okay. It's been peer reviewed as well. well you I'm can not check it out. The argument. No, no, he's not understanding. No, no, it's, the that's not my Are that's not my fault. You're meant to, but you're meant to be an atheist specialist. I'm you're, meant to be right. Yeah, yeah, right. So if okay. if you don't understand the argument. Uh, you're one of the figures of new uh, figureheads of new atheism. Okay. If you don't understand the argument, then there's only one thing I can do: is I can try and relay the argument. But it's not it's we not my fault that you don't understand. Going? No, no. Let me say one more time. Let me make it as easy as possible, right? Say so you say so you have a phone. This is a phone, okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me make this as simple as possible. Is it dependent on something? It's dependent on charge. I have to put the charger inside. Yes. Well, the existence of the phone isn't dependent on charge. Not the existence of, uh, yeah, yeah, the functioning. We're just, the f good, excellent. Thank you for that. The, does this the, get any better from here? Yeah, it does. We just have to be patient. Because okay. I'm, I'm losing that. I should have gone already. We, we, Aaron, if I was uh, listening to something you're saying, I was trying to get what you're saying, right? We all have to be patient with each other for learning to take place. Okay, you had time then? All right. I had time then. Aaron, this phone has charge in it. Okay. If you put, it requires a charger in order to be charged. Now say for example, okay. I connect this phone to another phone, yes, with a wire. I put this phone to another phone, to a on a wire, right? You've got this phone, another phone, in a wire, right? And then you've got that phone with another phone in the wire. So you've got three phones, right? You have three phones. If you have three phones, what will eventually happen to the functionality of the phones? That the charge will run out. Would you agree with me? Okay. So what's this to do with necessity and possibility? Bro, okay, can you allow me to finish, no, bro? I'm just Josh, you're just poisoning the world, bro. You're, 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 everyone can see what you're no, doing. No, and, and you know, no, it's, it's no, looking no, cheap. Saying, it's I'm looking cheap. Saying, no, no, no. Mohammed, all I'm saying is... As a Christian, you should just... No, no, no. We'll I'll, have the discussion no, no, no. later, bro. It's not about Christianity and Islam. It's about what is a good argument well, or not. No, let me, let me make it then. I and think then, she clarified the point. Let me, let me feel like, Josh, let me speak about it. Let me make the argument and then you can judge. I was just in the middle of... What is your analogy to do with this? Well, let me finish. Well, you haven't let me finish, have you? If you don't let someone finish and then you say it's not good, then that's actually disingenuity. All right, so you've got three phones. Say, for example, all of them got charged, right? So I connect this phone to another phone and this phone to another phone. Now, what will happen if I connect all three of them to allow them all to charge using each other's energies? Eventually, they all run out of charge. We all agree. And the reason why is because they're all dependent. They all depend. The phone is dependent. The charge of the phone, the analogy here is the charge of the phone. The charge of the phone is dependent, yes? Now, what I'm saying is, if you have a world only of limited, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, limited um, dependent things, all of them will depend upon another thing. And if this is in the context of existence, you would not have existence because you have to have something which depends upon nothing in order for everything else to exist. <laughs> Does that make sense? So in other words, in our, in our uh, example and analogy, you have to have an infinite power source. What does an atom depend on for existence? So we were going back to what we just said, the necessary existence. That existence, okay, that... You yeah, haven't, yeah, you haven't yeah. shown yet that uh, yeah, necessary yeah. things aren't also possible things, that those two categories... Now what I'm saying is, no, what I've shown is that possible or contingent things by definition are dependent. A phone, this phone is dependent on another phone for charge. That phone on another phone for charge, if we connect them, right? Now what I'm... Just let me finish. If you have three of them, if you have five of them, if you have ten of them, then they're all going to be dependent on each other. Now, what's going to eventually happen on the, with the phones? They're going to run out of charge. What I'm saying to you is that the functionality of the phone's charge here is analogous to existence, in my analogy. And also, it's not a perfect analogy. You can, you can destroy the analogy if you want. But what I'm saying is that this is my only thing that I can try and break, draw it closer to you. 
So if things which are dependent, depend upon dependent things add, in, uh, add infinitum, unless there's an infinite power source somewhere in the equation, there will not be any existence. And what I'm saying is that the infinite power source, if you like, or the necessary existence that we refer to is God. Now we call it God. What it's if not, it's not an infinite power source? It can't be, right? It has to be. Why? Because otherwise nothing else would be in existence. Okay, you haven't shown that any... Okay. Yeah, go on, Julie. What is the, the, the Do you understand this point? Do you get it? So, so we, we as organisms yeah, so get our energy from the sun. Right? Yes, yes, good. So, and that Excellent. doesn't have to be infinite. No, 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 hold on. This is a very good uh, example. So uh, we're, we're in, for example, um, well, an ecosystem, right? You've got human beings, you've got animals, whatever you want. All of that is dependent upon the sun, yes? Mm -hmm. The sun itself... It's not infinite. It's not infinite, but the, the sun itself is dependent upon other things. What? Other suns. Uh, no, other suns, other galaxies, how other... Is, how is our sun dependent on other it's, suns? Uh, it's, uh, it depends on the laws of physics. It's dependent upon a range of factors, helium. If, if you didn't have helium, you couldn't have a sun. You, you have to have different... If you break down the sun, uh, we agree, right? So the sun is dependent, and uh, we agree, yeah? Okay, okay. I think the final flaw with your argument is that you haven't shown that no, the no, no, fundamental... No, 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 Julia, can we, can we stick... To, sorry, sorry, before you, done, before you continue... Let's, he understands this, or I just want him to fully understand the argument. He's, he's already nearly there. What you said is that the sun is, de uh, uh, is not dependent on something else. And we've shown that actually it is, right? So the whole universe now, there's only two ways you can go. And I, none of it is infinite. <coughs> no, no problem. Is the universe dependent or independent? The way that you're talking about, the sun having to have fuel and you know, healing. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. If I take that, yeah, yeah. then... If the sun is dependent on other things. Yes, fine. Then in, and it's perfect. Not infinite. So no, 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 excellent, excellent. And not necessary. Right, right. So the same thing now. So what we need to have, because that chain will continue going. Dependent things can't depend upon dependent things ad infinitum. You have to have something which is necessary. Yeah, yeah, of course. All, all I'm saying is that there is an it's impossible, it's logically inconceivable that dependent things can depend upon dependent things ad infinitum. All I'm saying That's is why that they're not infinite. Nobody yeah, claims yeah. that. Yeah. No fundamental yes. particles so, right. don't so, depend on anything. Pardon? Can Which you one? prove to me that fundamental particles all right, depend I'm on anything? I'm out of here. Yes. <laughs> they depend okay. upon other things. Of course they do. Well, come here and you prove to me that they don't. Come, come, come. Here. You're the one trying to prove something to me. The burden of proof is on no, you. No, no, no. I've said, you're, you've just made a claim, actually. You said that... Uh, no, I said that... Julia, sorry. Necessarily, for Julia, your argument, you need to prove you, a thing. No, no. You said, you said, right. you said that... Particles don't depend on anything. Can you prove that for me, please? No, I've said that for your argument to hold, you need to show that fundamental particles don't depend on anything. Here? Okay. All right. So here's the thing. What you, what you and Aaron couldn't deal with is, and uh, this is the new atheist movement. Subhanallah. The new atheist movement is crumbling right in front of me, one by one. Every single one of them cannot deal with this argument, and it's not because of. By the way, it's, it's, I can't believe it. Like you know, it really all it, all it took was just a little bit of bringing out an argument. And the whole new atheist movement in front of my very okay. eyes Could is crumbling. Could you, instead of preaching, no. make your argument? No, no, I will make my argument, Julia. Grandstanding, not preaching. Yes, sorry. Okay. Pardon? Grandstanding, not preaching. Don't yeah, 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 yeah. So what I was going to say, Julia, <laughs> is you, you said particles don't depend on, on anything. I'm talking right? about fundamental, fundamental particles. Fundamental particles. No I'm saying no. Can you prove that? I am tell I'm telling you that for your argument to hold, you need to show that fundamental particles don't depend on anything. That's Julia, all I'm saying. What you said, Julia. You yeah. said right here and right now, and it was on the camera, and I'm not a liar. I say I believe that that's the case. Okay, can you but prove it? No, you said no I can't, I can't so prove it. So why are you making a claim? No, because I'm telling you that for your argument to hold, you need to show that that's that the case. That fundamental particles depend on something. Okay, they depend upon the laws of nature. Yeah, just no, prove it. Wait, no. Oh, uh, wait a minute, no. No, they, no, what do you mean they depend on the laws the of laws nature? The laws of physics. Which are? Which are presupposed by the study of science. Can you, no, no, no. Can you tell me what the laws of physics are? There are many. If you want to go and see a book on it, I'll, I'll, I'll direct you. Okay, no, no, no. no look, I'm somebody question. who studies physics. Right, I ask, want you to tell me right. what you think the laws of physics let are. Me, are let because let me, physicists don't know. That's okay, the problem. Okay, well, let me answer your question. As someone who studies physics, yeah. you're still an undergrad, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so you're in your first year? Yes, I am. All right, so someone like Martin Rees has write, wrote a book on just six numbers. I don't know who that is. Okay, so you should know, because this is a person who's actually outlined the six fundamental constants. Or among them, for example, N. Uh, N equals nature. He actually calls it N for nature. And he says that that is, uh, and that's what he was talking about, the numbers that, that detail the, the laws of nature, for example. He, he mentions six sure. different numbers, E, N. Uh, those, are, those are numbers of mathematics rather than physics. They are physics. What are you no, talking e, about? E, E, um, what, what, what Euler's number. You, what university did you Imperial study? Imperial College London. Okay, so I'm sure you're clever enough to know that when, when, physics, when mathematics is applied to the cosmos, it's, because it's called physics. 
You've just done yes, your A-levels? Yes, mathematics. No, done... I'm, I'm from Germany. I did my Abitur. Okay, you've done that. So you know you know the deal, right? So I don't have to tell you that. I mean, I'm not a physicist, but you should know this. Well, I know that uh, physics is an attempt to mathematically describe the universe. There you the have it. The best so, we have so is the Martin standard model. So good. Martin Rees said that. He got six numbers. He said, what are the rules? It can be described in different uh, ways. Martin Rees has got his uh, standard What are those way. numbers except for E? And he's got uh, e equals uh, uh, n equals nature, which he said uh, that which is, is mathematically meaningless. No, let me explain. Well, I have to, he, got, he actually gave a number, which is zero point zero seven. But what, what significance does zero point zero seven have? Is it called physics when mathematics is applied to the universe or not? Yes. Okay, so uh, when he says zero point zero seven is a number n which is applied to the universe, is that math, is that physics? How or not? does he apply to the universe? Well, he looks at well. Look at E, for example, right? Yes. E is he comes from the, mathematics. The, right. So he he says that that's the conversion of. Um, helium into energy, for example. No, E is... I mean, if we're talking about Epi Euler's epicen, constant... Epicen. Epsilon. Uh, whatever it is. Well, Epsilon right? gets used for a lot of different things. Right, so he uses it in his own way, and he gives it. He gives his own articulation of it. Uh, go check the professor book for the introduction. Okay, look. What's the, what's what, you're the saying, what you're saying right now is that there are seven numbers which are important. Six. Six, okay. Come According on. to Martin Rees. Go, go for it. Six numbers are important. Right. How does this relate to the fundamental... You like, said, though, your question was that particles uh, don't depend on anything, they're independent. I'm saying to you... No, I'm saying you have to show that. Do you believe that particles are independent? Uh, of what? You said just don't, please don't retract your argument because I'm... Watch this, Josh. This is what Christian missionaries need to learn. Now, you're saying that particles are independent. Yes or no? I'm saying they're fundamental kind of particles. No, no, please, no, no, because you, you were trying to interrupt me when I was saying that. I'm saying that to the best of my knowledge, yeah, yeah. there are what, a certain what, amount what, of fundamental... Like, what I'm yeah. basing this off yeah, is yeah. the standard model, which is yeah. the best model we have for the universe right now. Right. It is incomplete. All physicists Perfect, will admit that it's incomplete. No problem. But Julia, you said that the particles, uh, fundamental particles, don't yes. depend on every anything. She Definitely, said that. they're not composed of anything else. No, no. You said, unless you want to retract that statement, which is what every atheist does when they're in front of me. No, you said that fundamental particles don't depend on anything. I believe that to be the case. Right. I do not claim that it's true. Perfect. Now, do you believe? that fundamental particles don't depend on anything. Uh, I believe that to be the case, Excellent. but I'm not claiming that Julia, that's true. thank you for saying that, because now what you've shown is that you believe in the existence of an independent being. <laughs> but the only thing is, no, 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 hold on, hold on. The only thing is now... Do you know how many fundamental particles no, 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 there no, are? No, 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 no problem. But you accept, because before you were saying there's no such thing as a necessary thing. You're saying now no, that there is... No, hold on, Julie. I, and you're going to retract your statement because that's what every atheist does in front of me. You said... You're putting words in my no, mouth. No, no, it's on camera. You said you believe... You just said it four minute, two, two minutes ago. You just said you believe that fundamental um, particles are not dependent on anything. By definition, what you're effectively saying is you believe fundamental particles I mean, are independent. Now, what I'm saying is... Technically, what right. I'm saying when I, when I, what I say, what I mean when I say fundamental Don't particles is... what you mean. Is, That's what you meant. No, no, no. I'm just explaining what the standard model says. Right, but okay, go ahead. Fundamentally... Yeah. According to quantum field theory, fundamental right. particles are essentially just energy spikes in no a problem. field. But your belief... And so they sort of depend on energy. Julia, you shouldn't have come here today and tried to challenge me. Because what you've done... No, seriously, you should really think about it before you come and stand and make claims uh, without no, no, revising no, I it. I told you what you need to Julia, show me Julia, to make I don't need to show you anything. You yes, have, you do. You shouldn't have come here because what you've done now is you've given me exactly what I wanted. In the beginning you said that I have to prove that there's a necessary independent being. Now you've just said, you believe that fundamental particles are not dependent on... Your words exactly, you believe, you said I believe, yeah. fundamental particles are not dependent on anything. Now all I'm saying as a Muslim is that my my understanding of... So God, let, me, let me finish. God is, let me, is a muon. Let me finish, let me finish. No, no, your God... <laughs> Yeah, your God is, a new, uh, is, is that. The, the only difference between my God and your God is size. That's the only difference. The, here's, no, honestly, you, you need to understand you're not an atheist anymore in front of me. I've converted you straight to Islam. The only thing you need to do... No, no, no. All you need to know and believe in is, is the right attributes of God and uh, the Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. So does, does, and obviously, if you want to believe in Jesus... Is Muhammad oh, the Jesus. prophet, the messenger no, no, of a muon, of an electron, no, no, no. a photon? No, listen to me. You, you said that... And also, I will Julie, add... Julie, Julie, no, you don't need to add anything. You've given me exactly what I want to no, hear. No, 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 no. I haven't. Add it. You said I that you believe that fundamental beginning. particles are independent. That's what she said. Not dependent on anything. That's the definition of independence. Now, if you believe in an independent entity... Now, let me tell you something from an Islamic perspective. 
And you have to understand this. Can I, let me just finish, sorry. I think the word independent is very misleading you in this context. Wait a minute, you said not dependent on anything. How can, someone, how can something be not dependent okay. on anything can and not independent? Can you let me clarify? Yes, please. I think the word dependent is very misleading because it, like, fundamentally, even inside the standard model, things that, like, are interdependent. They're just interdependent on a fundamental <laughs> level. And the thing is, I know that the standard model isn't complete, so there is some deeper layer somewhere. So it's interdependent. Right? Oh yeah, they're interdependent. So what fundamental particles are interdependent? Well, in the sense that everything relies it's on energy to some extent. Have, everything, I know, I know as I said, particles are essentially just expressions of energy in a quantum field. Julie, thank you. You're contradicting yourself. Because interdependence entails dependence. If you're saying that fundamental particles are interdependent, you're saying it's dependent. Then you said that it's you're not dependent on anything. That's mouth. a contradiction. Either you're you want to improve in this or that. And that's what atheists do. Josh, Josh, this is you're what atheists do. Yeah. Uh, Julie, is there anything you want to add? Yeah. Sorry, is okay. it, we're done here. Is there anything no. you want to add? Yes, of course. Um, you're talking about complete. It's pretty okay, pity that people that give you a chance yeah, to yeah. give you a full argument. Yeah. Yeah. It's the full argument.